Good Wednesday morning, everybody. It is April the 28th. It is a good day to be alive. It's a good day to look out your window. I've been watching the Weather Channel and uh, it looks like it's kind of nice everywhere. Uh, still some cold weather to be found. And so um, Max and I have just been for a long walk. We took Hans with us too, but uh, when we came in, then Hans went in there with Steve and Max chose to stand here with me and I'm kind of loving it. He's not distracted by Hans right now and uh, he has all of my attention. I have all of his, well he doesn't have all of my attention, but he has, he's a good sweet little puppy. He's in desperate need of a haircut. I'm gonna take him next week and uh, get his first haircut and so um, I'm pretty excited about that. The girl who is gonna do his hair has no idea what's getting ready to happen in her life because he is squirmy and wiggly and he's not just this little calm dog like Hans is. Today, we are going to be looking at two different uh, places in the Old Testament because yesterday I started talking about uh, how we have concerns in our life and how we need help and how we need uh, to be reassured that we are worthy and that we're not insignificant. We need to be reassured that God himself is taking care of our enemies. We are, need to be reassured that God will be with us through every situation, not just our good times, not just our bad times, but in every situation that he's very close, very present to us at all times, and I'm so grateful for that reminder. And evidently, I'm not the only one because several of you sent me a text yesterday and said, I sure did need, you know, to be reminded, as did I yesterday, that God cares, that God knows, that He loves us, that He is with us. And when our enemies try to surround us, when our enemies try to invade, when our enemies try to come against us, I'm so glad that I was reminded yesterday, that I was reminded yesterday, that God hears my prayer and that God himself is taking care of my enemies. Now, I'm not talking about our um, national enemies. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when the enemy comes against us with sayings that sound like we're not worthy, we're not uh who God says we were. I I heard a statement the other night and I've been thinking about a book and the name of it is going to be, Did God Really Say That? And that can go two ways, guys, because when the Satan said, when the serpent said that to Eve, when he said, did God really say that? That was him testing her and tempting her to say, God didn't really say that because why would he care what you ate from? But this also can mean, did God really say that? When God says something to you, you know, we receive it and we accept it and we think about it. And then in an hour or so, we're really, we're sitting there thinking, did God really say that to me? Did God really say that to me? And if we repeat that to someone else, what God has promised us, then sometimes they look at us and they're saying, did God really say that to you? Did God really say that to you? And they say it in such a convincing way that we're starting to think, why would God say something like that to me? You want down, buddy? All right. Why would God say something like that to me? How could I deserve that? So yesterday, as we went through all of those scriptures, and especially in Isaiah 41, and we're saying, God, did you, did you really say that to me? Or was that for somebody else? That surely wasn't for me. I want us to look today, we're going to start in Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Psalms 34 says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord, no wait, I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the right place. 
No, yeah, I'm not wise. And his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So this is saying the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The ears of the Lord are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who are evil. So if this is evil over here and God's got his face turned away from them, he's looking at me. So I have his full attention. He's listening to me, he's looking at me, he's seeing me, and then his face is turned towards me. His face is turned towards me to cut off the memory of them from the earth. To cut off the memory of them from the earth. So you've got this, let's say you've got this enemy, and uh, not only is God listening to you and looking at you and hearing you, and seeing you and his face is turned towards you. He's got his arms of protection around you. But this says, but the enemy is going to be cut off from your memory. You won't even remember it. I told you yesterday that several years ago, somebody came against uh, Steve and against me. And it was slanderous and it was ugly stuff. And I don't remember what his name was. And his influence over me is zero. His influence over my children, zero, zero. When God cuts your enemy off, it, he does it. It's gone. It's not gonna come back. When God cuts your enemy off because he's looking at you, he's seeing you, he's hearing you, and he. He's thinking, I don't want that to happen to my child. Then it says, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the broken, broken hearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Crushed in spirit there is referenced beaten out like a hammer. Beaten out like a hammer. I want you to think about if if you if you had a hammer and just constant constant assault, constantly just being hammered out, hammered out, day in day out. And and listen, many many know what I'm talking about. That's not an isolated one time you heard about this person. It says they're crushed in their spirit and the Lord is close to those. Close to those. Sally and I talked yesterday about a time in our lives when we were broken hearted over something. And we felt like we were crushed and the Lord saved us in such a spectacular way, in such a magnificent way. And Sherry and I were talking about this two nights ago, that when the Lord comes in and he saves us, he does it in such a magnificent, spectacular, personal way that you cannot deny it was God. Nobody can look at your life and say, did God really say that? No. They're looking at your life. And they're looking at, as Sally says, testimony after testimony after testimony. And they're looking at your life and they're looking at your situation. And they know what has gone before you. What's been dragging behind you maybe for years. And now they look at that situation and they look at you and you're proclaiming God did that. God did that. John and I went to a doctor's appointment he had uh, oh, down in Florida. So it's been many years ago, probably 10 years ago now. And it was in a clinic. He was getting uh, uh, a checkup done on um, some surgery that he was supposed to have had on his knee, but when they got in there, there was new growth 
and that tissue had rejoined and that muscle had rejoined and the doctor said it doesn't happen that way but it did so they sewed him back up sewed his little knee back up and they uh, they said we'll see you in three weeks and so we went back in three weeks and the clinic was full of people who were in the same situation and John went walking in like a you know a champion and uh, the doctors looked at it and they said this is the weirdest thing we've never ever seen that kind of tissue grow back together on its own it always needs a graft so they finished and somebody from across the room it was a weird setup guys weird setup in the room was and somebody from across the room yelled out and said hey how come when was your surgery and john told him when it was and he said mine's further away than yours and you're you're doing so well how is that possible and john said i'll tell you how it's possible I go to Cooper City Church of God, and we believe in prayer there. We believe in miracles there. And God touched my leg, and he healed it. And he turned around, and he motioned for me, and out we walked. God does things for us in spectacular ways. He comes in, he takes care of that. Now look at Isaiah uh, 43. Isaiah 43. But now... This is what the Lord says. Again, we're not listening to what uh, somebody, we're not listening to what, this is what Isaiah said. How on earth did I get lipstick on the inside of this cup? I must have been drinking left-handed earner. Skills, I've got skills. This isn't what somebody else said. This is what the Lord said. The Lord says, he who created you O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, and remember, we're we're putting that right in, we're putting our names right in there. It says, he, Marlene, I am not too far from you this morning. It feels so awesome to be here in Cleveland. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, now listen to this, don't be afraid, because I've redeemed you. Don't be afraid. There are people trying to surround you. There are people trying to do this. There, there are situations in your life they are trying to overwhelm you, but it says, but don't be afraid because I myself have redeemed you. I have summoned you by, my, by name and you are mine. You are mine. I'm gonna tell you, I married an only child. Many of you knew that already. Some. Don't know that, but Steve is an only child. And uh, one night we were doing that. I was doing that. Tell me five things that you love most about me. And Steve said, well, I'll tell you one. And I said, all right. He said, you're mine. You're mine. You see, an only child is possessive. Now, if you have 15 brothers and sisters, you are mine. That's important too. That means 100% devoted attention. I called you, I chose you by name, I redeemed you, I made sure everything was taken care of in your life, and then it says, I've called you and I've redeemed you, you are mine, and when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. I quote that scripture all the time when we go out on the boat. I, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Then it says, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. So you can go through the water, you can go through the fire, you can walk through flooded rivers, and it's not gonna sweep over you. Now, that absolutely does mean literally, but it also means think of the fires that try to come around you and, and you're walking through and don't think of walking down on the beach, you know, down along the shoreline. I want you to think of you're just walking and, you, and all of a sudden you're in deep, deep, deep water. We've all been in deep water before. How we react 
is the difference. When I get in literally deep water, and when I say deep water, I mean over my knees, I start losing my breath. I start, you know, I do not like that feeling. But think about being in deep, deep water. Maybe financially, you're just over your head. Maybe spiritually, you are struggling in the water. Maybe emotionally, it feels like the waves are just beating you and beating you and beating you one after the other, and you can't recover from one until the next one has knocked you down. When Sally was uh, just a baby, uh, and Sherry not even thought of yet, we took a vacation to Myrtle Beach, and Daddy had my hand, and he had Sally's hand, and um, if Sherry wasn't born, I was about six and so sally would have been about two and he had us each by the hand now here's the thing i don't really remember this but my dog is whining but daddy told this story mama told this story enough that i can honestly imagine that i remember seeing it maybe i do maybe i do daddy had one hand on sally one hand on me we go out into the water. Daddy was a good swimmer. A big wave came in and knocked all three of us down. And Daddy scooped us out. I think he got me first. He scooped us out and then ran us up to the shore. He took care of us. Listen, there are times in our lives where even when we're holding on to the Father's hand, we feel like I am just being battered, battered, battered by the waves by the oncoming, by whatever is going on in my life, I just feel like there have been so many times in my life where honestly I felt like if one more wave of this comes over me, I'm just going to go under. I'm just surrounded by waves. But this is saying he will take, hold on, my dog's stuck. Hold on one second. I apologize. Max, come here. Come here. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. You're all right. Come on, boy. <laughs> Sorry about that. We feel like we're surrounded. And this is saying to us that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and they will not sweep over you. They will not take you out, in other words. I'm going to be there with you. And when you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. The flames cannot set you ablaze. Think of the three Hebrew men who walked into that fiery furnace. And when they came out, this is my favorite part, they didn't even smell like smoke. The only thing burned away, the only thing destroyed was their, were their ropes, the things that had been holding them in bondage. God is saying to us, I promise you this. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to let other people come. It says, since you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you. I think we should all just write that on a, a sticky and wear it today. Because you are precious in my sight and because I love you. Precious and honored in my sight. Precious and honored in my sight. And because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid for I will be with you. And then it goes into the part that maybe I love the most. And I'm going to bring your children in. I'm going to bring your children in uh, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And I'm going to say to all the parts of the world, you can't have these kids. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say to all the parts of the world, you cannot have these kids. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and whom I made. You're the one. You're the one I've chosen. And so because of that, I'm going to put this blessing not just on you, but on your children. They're not going to be lost. They're not going to be far away. It says, 
Uh, hold on. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Then it says, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Now that know right there, so that you may know, K-N-O-W, that you may know and believe me, that is a very personal no. That is a very intimate no. A lot of people know me. A lot of people know me. They've heard of me. They've heard of me. But they don't really know me. They don't. Somebody called you know, the, the church the other day and gave me as a, a reference and uh, said that I would be willing to accommodate their request. And uh, so they sent that note to me and they said, so-and-so, who I believe is a friend of yours, you know, is needing to do this and that. And I said, and what is the name again? And so they told me again, I said, I don't recognize that name, but that's, that doesn't mean, you know, anything anymore, especially. And so um, they gave me her phone number and I said, well, I'll just check in with her myself and I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll fix this out. So I called and it took me five minutes to explain to her who it was calling her. She didn't even recognize my name. And let me tell you something else about living in D.C. If somebody claims they know me, but they don't recognize my voice, mm, something's not quite right. God says there are a lot of people who are going to say, oh, I knew you, I knew you. And he's going to look at them and say, well, I don't know you. I don't know you. But this says that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. I am he what? I am he. I am he. I am he who makes these promises to you. I am he who comes in and takes over these things for you. I am he who created the heavens and the earth. I am he who makes sure that the water doesn't overtake you. I am that guy. And I'm the only one like me. And I'm the only one who knows how to understand you. And if you know me, if you truly know me, and if you believe in me, then these things are going to happen for your, uh, for your benefit and for your protection. But then it says, before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I even, I am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no Savior. Well, what about, nope. Well, uh, no, uh-uh. I mean, that, this scripture right here in Isaiah 43 puts the end to any discussion of what about the other guys. This says, I, even I, am the Lord. And apart from me, there is no Savior. I have revealed and I have saved and I have proclaimed. I have revealed and I have saved and I have proclaimed. I, and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? I like that. When I do something, nobody else can reverse it. If I make a decision there at our church, and then Steve says, that's not going to work. We can't do that. Well, he reverse it. He's the boss. He's the boss boss. Now, when we're here in this house, he's the head of this house. But, you know, we kind of co co-run our family. But he's the head. But at that church, he's the boss. I work for him. He signs my check like he signs the other checks. But God is saying before me, no other. I am he, and when I say something, and when I decide something, then nobody can reverse it. They can try to reverse it. They can say, did God really say? They can bring these things, and they can try to do all kinds of crazy stuff. But he says, but nobody can reverse it. Once I put something into motion, it's done. Take it to the bank, it's done. Write it on your heart, it's done. Did I promise I'd bring your children back? Done. Did I promise I would save you? Done. Did I say I'm not going to let the waters over flood overtake you? Yeah, I promise that stuff. 
because it says in God's word that I'm going to do that for you and I'm going to reveal that to you and I've saved you and I've proclaimed and it says I am God and you are mine. I have chosen you. I've called you by name because I love you. You are precious. You are honored in my sight. And because of all of those things working together to God's glory. And he says, I'm going to take care of these things. And nobody can turn that thing around. Nobody can say, God promised you that. But here's what's really going to happen. Nobody can say that. Nobody. Nobody. This is says, let me read one more. Let me go back to, before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. And I alone am your savior. When you're in that flood and you need to be saved, when you're in that fire and you need to be saved, and you're thinking, who can save me? Who can save me? Well, the answer is God can. And he alone can. I told you that Sally and I have been talking about, and Sherry and I and Sally and I have been talking about testimony after testimony. And uh, Steve's been joining in with that conversation. Of course, Aaron and Steve. And we've been talking about how when God does something, did he promise about our children? He did. And he's fulfilling it. What about our children's children? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right now, upstairs, one of my children's children is, uh, that's a blessing from the Lord. Steve and I have 11, 11, 11 grandchildren. 11 grandchildren. And they're all unique. They're all special. They're all amazing I do not love one more than I love the other but I love them different because I'm their grandmother God looks at us and he says I have how many children it's a number I don't even imagine but I love them all and I've called them all by name I've called them all by name. And because I love them, they're so precious in my sight. Alistair and Oscar are going to come by today. And I'm just going to tell you, I can't wait. I can barely breathe. I'm so excited to see them. I'm fully vaccinated now, and, and Mike is, and Steve is, and so... Um, the kids are going to come, and I get to see them for a little while. And I, I love their, I mean, Oscar and Alistair. Who would have thought I would have a grandchild named Oscar or a grandchild named Alistair? But there they are, those two sweet kiddos, and I can't wait to see them because they're mine. They're mine. I love them. I didn't create them. I didn't create them, but I love them. When you love somebody and your heart is overflowing and it's unconditional, I want us to take that and multiply it by a number that's never been invented yet. And that's how much God loves us and he looks at us and he's so excited about us. Alistair's been sending me texts. Here's where we are now. Here's where we are now. Oscar sent me a, a little voice message that said, please go get some of those cookies. So the minute I hang up here, I'm gonna go get some of those cookies. Because when you love somebody, you're gonna do the things that show how much you love them. That's why God looks at us and we know he loves us and he promises he promises these wonderful things. He wants to put these things into our lives. He wants to save our children. He wants to rescue us from the water. He wants to rescue us from the fire. And he promised. I promise you. I promise you. 
And God's promise can never be reversed. It can never be reversed. We can't be taken out of his hand. We can't be removed from his sight. We can't even be beat up, hammered by our enemies. Because this says, you know what? I'm going to take those enemies and I'm going to turn this thing around. In five years, you won't even remember who it was slandering you. In five years, you won't even be thinking about what somebody said that was cruel. Because I'm going to take care of it. Father, I thank you today for your promises. I thank you, Lord, that in you, your promises are yes and amen. Done and done. I thank you, Father, that you've reminded us today how much you care for us and how much you love us. Lord, I thank you that you are constantly watching over us and protecting us and loving us. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The sun just broke through a cloud. It's going to be a beautiful day because I'm standing in the presence of God today. I love you guys so much. I am getting ready to go get those cookies for that baby and for my baby. You know, that's a funny thing about grandchildren and, and people think people that they love, um, you know, that people love their grandchildren more, and that is absolutely not the truth. I, and I love my grandchildren in such an abundance that it's hard to even describe it. But I'm going to tell you who I'm excited to see today, too, is my boy. My boy. That baby boy of mine that's six foot three and has a beard and he, you know, he's beard and a mustache, and he's this big old grown man. But I'm going to tell you, that's the first one I'll hug. I love you guys so much. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. I will see you tomorrow morning. And um, just be careful today and be blessed. Love one another.